Hey, welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to fix the quantity selector and the add to cart that we faced in the last video. And behind the scene, I also designed this variant selector properly using CSS grid. So it will display nicely if you have more of these variants. And the issue with the quantity selector is because it, here is the, the first issue. When we increase this from this arrow, because the type of this input is a number and we click on this plus, it is not going to increase the number. It is just going to combine both of these numbers together. So that is not what we want. And also, if we have this quantity, we add to the cart, it just add one. So we are going to fix this in this video. You will uh, learn about how come component communication works in AlpineJS and how we can talk with between these two components because they are separate component. Okay, first let me refresh and show you the first issue and how we can fix it. This is our component for Alpine and this is the quantity. Now watch for the changes in this quantity. The type of this is currently number. When I click this plus, it is still a number, right? So when I press this arrow up and down, it become a string. So when it is a string and I click plus, it will plus that with the one. It will combine both of them. That's how JavaScript work. So, and the thing is, I was expecting like in the browser, this one should increase it as a number, not as a string. But yeah, that is weird behavior that this is the default HTML5 um, input for number. It is increasing the number and it is changing it to a string. So let's fix that. If I come to the quantity selector in my code, there is what we do. This will uh, call the minus function. This one will call the plus function. And these are our functions that we have written. Uh, we will refactor this in the future, but for now, this is the right place to, dis to write all of our JavaScript. Now, what I want to do is before I compare them in here, before I increase them, before I or like increase them in here or decrease the number in here, I want to change that to um, integer. So here is what we do. I say this dot quantity. Okay, this is also completing the wrong thing. And I'm going to say um, parse int quantity. I'm not going to add it, the value in here. So basically, in here I'm saying, okay, quantity, your number, your value should be an integer. So we are parsing that to an integer and assigning it to itself. The same thing we do in here. And now if I come to my code, let's refresh it. And if I increase this, let me grab the component. Increasing this, it is uh, what it is like a number. When I increase from here, it become a string in here. But when I increase again, oops, I think I didn't refresh it properly. Let me refresh again. Sorry for that. Now it is a number. It is a string. It is a number. You see, it is changing it to a number. So parse int will change that to an integer and it works fine in here. That's it, like that is how easily we can do it. Now, if I bring it down a little bit, I don't wanna add all of this quantity. Add, it doesn't add six. So the next step is to fix that problem. How do we fix it? We watch for any changes on this input and then we will update something in the add to cart component. So let's come to the code. This is our quantity modifier. In here, I'm going to use a watcher. In AlpineJS, you can watch for any component change and fire an event. That should be an easy thing to do, right? So let's come to the AlpineJS and I'm going to show you the documentation. They have a watcher, uh, what do they call it? This is magic method called watch. You can watch for any changes for the property. The property is open. If it change, you can console.log the value. And the good thing about the watch is it will run only if you like um, change the value. And there is also one more called effect, something like this. If it also does the same thing, I think, but it is a little bit different than, it will just watch for any changes in the, the whole component. But the best one for us to use is the, the watcher in here. So I'm going to copy the, in, like, the entire code from this initial, and it will run on initial, of this component. 
and let's watch for the quantity right if the quantity updates it is going to have the value in here i'm going to have the value instead of like um, doing anything with the value let's do this i'm going to dispatch an event in here so what is our dispatch event we can call it quantity change and then we can pass the value it automatically completed for me quantity changed that is a nice thing but we can say quantity updated change is also fine yeah we change and update both are the same then we have this value instead of sending the value why not we send a quantity as object in here and then i will pass the value in here and then when this event fire it will send this value for us okay now let's watch let's listen for this event in our add to cart component if i scroll down um this is share now let me see where is the buy button this is the buy buttons and this is our component we have the quantity in here let's update this quantity and again i'll come at the bottom and i'm going to listen for an event what was the event name quantity change dot window it is equal to quantity equal to it was going to listen for the event and then it's going to go to the details which is the data that it is passed and what was the property name it was quantity and it will assign it to the quantity in here now the last step is we should have an input in here for the quantity we don't have this is the form this is the variant id and this is the button we should have another input which is hidden and the name of this one this input should be quantity okay now the value of this should be the value of quantity in here so in alpine we use the x model to sync both of them together with qty something like this right and let's also pass the value uh, we don't have to do it but i'll push the pass the value of uh, one by default in here that should be fine now let's go back in here and let's refresh the page and let's see what uh, we will have in here now let's see for the changes this is add to cart and has a quantity of one let's increase this yes this one is also increasing increase it yes it is working and if i add to the cart it should add the three and the cart it was a bit slow but that worked now let's uh let's remove this and let's try again we should remove this okay let's increase it like decrease it add to cart and it works now the good thing is if you ever want to do something with the quantity of that if you want to do anything all you have to do is listen for this event quantity changed on your document on the window level and then you will have access to the quantity that is how easy it is and this one is also important it is hidden no one see it but yeah that is how it works now it will work independently it is an event driven component it will listen for another component if they change something they will trigger the change and they will listen and get those changes and that is i think the product page i hope this video series is informative and yeah the product page is done and next step we have some more thing to cover like collection page filters megamino and you know what else but yeah those are the thing also color swatch variant which is an advanced topic but i will try my best to cover that that is a bit advanced like taking too long to explain on a short video but still that is on my to-do list a lot of people don't know how to do it so i will try to add this in the future video but for now in the next video let's focus on the collection page and the filter thank you for watching